Welcome to Clutch Sports Radio. Uh, we're really excited here. We're actually broadcasting live from the Backyard Grill in Manassas. Really excited to be here. We'll be joined by Lorenzo Alexander. Notice that this past year or, or this off season, I know that there are so many distractions with the lockout and everything. But I mean, so many teams kind of after that thing was over. Then you have the the Eagles doing this whole dream team and putting yeah. all these players together. You had distractions. You have us with you know the whole quarterback. But you know the, the Green Bay Packers, for example, were kind of under the radar. I felt like no one yeah. really talked about them. And kind of I feel like some people kind of put them out of the picture. Yeah, well you need to talk about them. Those guys are the, the champs. Uh, they really had their complete team already. They really didn't have to make any too many big moves, any big splashes, because I think they, they were young, but then they were veterans in certain positions that they had. So they didn't really make any, you know, ooh, you know, nice, sexy moves in the offseason. And, and why do that when you have a team that just won the Super Bowl and you got a rod the quarterback who's going to be there for the next 10 years if he decides to. You got guys all over the place, especially on that defense, that are young, that's going to play well. And uh, there's, there's really no reason. So they're going on the radar like they normally do, and they're going to step up and play big tonight. Isn't it awesome the fact that we can be talking about this game going on tonight, that this lockout is over? I mean, right. kind of, let's take it back one step. How does it feel to be here now, knowing that this game is done tonight, and Sunday right. you're going to be lacing up those cleats, putting on those pads, right. wrapping on that helmet, and you're going to yourself go out there and kick off your Redskins season. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's a phenomenal feeling. Uh, you know, people are kind of getting panicky. They're kind of getting, uh, it's really unsure whether or not the season is going to happen or not. I think a lot of players are feeling that as well. But being able to, to get a deal done and be able to show up and go to work and get back to some type of normalcy. You know, guys love to play football. I'm passionate about it. And to get back out there with your guys and just get ready to try to win another championship or try to win another championship in the Redskins, this would be great for us. And uh, I think that's around the league, and especially for our fans. I mean, this is the most popular sport in America. And uh, I think a lot of people have been you know, sad on Sundays trying to figure out what to do uh, without this game. So it's great that on, on all ends for everybody and the owners as well uh, that we got a deal done and we're going to be able to show up and, and play tonight. And then um, especially on Sunday, uh, you know, especially when it coincides with the, the 10th anniversary of 9-11 and what that meant in this country and be able to give some, some people some release, be able to honor the, the people, the first responders, police officers, uh, the firemen, uh, just the average Joes that were showing up trying to help people that was just trying to be you know, heroes uh, themselves. So it's just great uh, to remember all those, those people and be able to honor them uh, through our football game and, and pregame on uh, Sunday as well. So uh, maybe this is a silly question, but I don't know. Do you get butterflies in your stomach? I would think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you think every so player passionate. still, yeah, yeah. I think every player still gets butterflies, especially if you're, if you're passionate about this game. And, and and I have them all the way up until the first play. I, and I and I love being on special teams because I'm on every first play of every game, either whether it's kickoff or kickoff return, and I'm able to set the tone. So I love going out there and being able to get a big hit, a big block for B-Bank so he can break something. And then after that, I mean, you just kind of fall into a routine and, and get into that groove of the game and you're ready to go play. Do you have any like game day routines? I mean, I hear that some people do. I mean, take me into like the locker room. What do you do when you, before you get out of that tunnel? Well, I don't really have anything interesting leading up to the game. You know, I like I have my routine. I think everybody finds a routine that works for them. So when they come out of the tunnel, they're ready to play. You know, I get to the uh, stadium pretty early, probably earlier than most people do. I get a chance to ice, do a little contrast. You know, get them legs lively get tape, go out there, warm up, go through my own little routine by myself uh, just to get ready. Uh, then I come back in, maybe listen to some music, uh, you know, go over some uh, different uh, adjustments that we might have for that week. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. I don't really have anything that's interesting, putting in my pants a certain way. I, you know, I just like to get ready and prepare throughout the week, and then when Sunday shows, I'm ready to go. Uniforms, what do you think about the Turks? Did you watch the game Monday night? Really? I don't, even, I don't even want to talk about it because there's a lot of Maryland fans in this area and I don't want to offend anyone. No, but what did you... I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like the uniforms, but you know, you know, if you're a Turk fan, you probably... I didn't like it. 
Now, they said that the, the Maryland is going to have 16 different combinations. Uh, they trying to be black on black. What they the organ of Under Armour? It's a Nike, right. it's a Nike it's Under Armour war now. Right, yeah. I mean, you, you didn't like it. I liked it. I thought I thought it was crazy. The cleats, did you see? The, look at those cleats. I guess I'm on my own. I thought you, you were gonna like it. You like it? I just I just didn't like the state flag all over the uniform. So, I mean, but if you like it, you like. It. Did, did, I, I I mean I kind of read this. Did they change uniforms like three times? Well, well I didn't see. Was it three times? Uh, twice. Or twice. They, they oh, warmed okay. up with. I didn't Something catch the warm up yeah. uniform, and then apparently they changed it. Oh okay. That's a little too much, I think, especially in the college level. Right. Well, well I understand, but I understand Under Armour's trying to you know brand themselves and try to compete. So they they got to do what they got to do and trying to make a big splash. So. It makes sense from a marketing side, but I didn't really like the uniform. And it's you know, but you know, I like some of the Under Armour stuff. I like some of the stuff, but I, it's hard. For, it's hard for people to compete against Nike. Nike's just so. It's just they nice. It's just nice. I haven't seen a bad Oregon uniform yet. Oh, I love that that neon green. I yeah. just, I love it. Now, what is your favorite uniform combination so far as a Redskin? I mean, you know, we've you know we had that retro. And right. Yeah. I, I think the I like the gold with the white pants. Uh, the gold pants, the white jersey with that R helmet. That was kind of I like. That was probably one of my favorites. Yeah. But I've seen some of the stuff they have coming up. Hopefully, the, the NFL allows Nike to really uh, go with our uniform next year because some of the stuff they kind of come up with is, is pretty. Uh, that hopefully we can get a black one that would be a Oh my gosh. Black on black? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Black, I guess just, what, what would it look like? Black with like the, the it the had beer burgundy. Yeah, yeah, black and, and burgundy. Oh with the the feather coming down. Yeah, oh, I, a couple I, of yes. up for it. You know, that it's just that's just real cool. You know, it works on and everybody loves black. Um, no, but uh, uh, Lorenzo, let's talk about a little bit of Madden. Um, there's this whole of course with the Madden curse. Um, Peyton Hillis from the Cleveland uh, Cleveland Browns is on the cover this year, and I guess the whole Madden curse they got the wrong Peyton. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, That's I exactly so. what happened. I guess they so. got the wrong Peyton, um, but nevertheless, um, how, when was the last time that you played Madden? Last time that I had time to play Madden was probably eight. So probably right around there, 08, we had babies. So I, I can't sit down and concentrate on the whole game without one of the little ones coming to get me. So I just kind of turned it down after that. So 08, so old, the 09, man. So, so the last one I played. Okay, but that means that you played with the Redskins and you played, you saw yourself oh, yeah, yeah, in the game. Yeah. I still keep now, up with it actually because we got a whole bunch of guys that play it and actually uh, have a league, you know, play online and play each other and create like their own dynasty and league. So. I make sure that that uh, I'm doing well in the game. They update me. So tell me, you obviously you played with the Redskins. And yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, what? That's one of the is that what, first that's what you, you do, do, right? First things you do after growing up is oh, I'm gonna play with myself on Madden. And, 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 I mean, it's an awesome feeling. I mean, that's like a, a dream come true. Something that you always look forward to. I can't wait till I get on this game. You know, so it, it, it definitely uh, is a blessing. And you don't realize how cool it is until you, know, you kind of sit back and, and have people. 